Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of On the Road with the Fish Guy. I am Jay the Fish Guy, thanks for joining us today. So today's episode, the idea came from a viewer request and uh, long overdue I guess, ick. Ugh, that nasty three letter word, right? So in this episode we're going to talk about how to prevent it and what to do if you have it. Stay tuned. So everybody should know what it looks like, right? Well, not necessarily. So this is ick. This is not ick. This is also not ick. I find that ick is the most commonly misdiagnosed ailment in the aquarium hobby. Now, whether that's because people only know about ick, as far as that's all they can really remember, as far as issues that their fish can have, but so many times over the years I've had people shoot me messages and go, hey, I think I have ick, what do I do? And it's like, well, no, it's a bacterial infection or a fungal infection or, or something like that. Anyways, so I figured it was good to start off on the right foot. This is what ick looks like. All right, moving on. How do you prevent ick? How do you stop from getting it in the first place? Well, the easiest way to do that is set up a quarantine system or a hospital tank. I know it's not the most popular way to do things as far as, well, you know, some of you may only be able to have one tank. You can't really qualify or justify having another tank, another expense, etc. Okay, I get that, but it is still bar none the best way to prevent ick from getting into your main display tank, period. Beyond that, do your due diligence when you're purchasing the fish. Make sure you're really getting up there and looking at the fish that you're buying. Sometimes it can be very subtle if it's not progressed very far. I mean, on top of looking for other issues and maladies as well, you know, bacterial, fungal infections, things like that, uh, watch the behavior of the fish. If they're flashing and scratching on the bottom or the rocks or the ornaments, that's a pretty good indicator that something is going on because that's them trying to get some relief from these external issues that they're having on their skin. So another good thing to keep in mind. So, all right, that's the best way to prevent it. Set up a quarantine tank and really look over your fish when you're purchasing them. Moving on. What do you do when you have it? All right, you have found at least one fish in your maiden display tank and they have ick. Uh-oh, right? Okay. If one fish has it in your tank and it's visible, you can just assume that everybody in the tank has been exposed and they're now potentially a carrier. So, what do you do now? Well, there's a lot of different ideologies on that and I'll try to touch base on all of them really quickly. There's the passive ways of going about treating it, meaning you're keeping them in the tank, you're just doing good water changes, good husbandry, good water quality, you're feeding them really well, you might be using something like a garlic or a vitamin additive, and you're just hoping that through good husbandry and good feeding that their immune systems will be able to fight off this external parasite and you'll just be able to get rid of it that way. That's one option. Another option is taking all the fish out of the tank, putting them in a hospital tank, treating them for as long as it takes, and then running your main display tank without fish for up to and including six weeks. And the idea of that is that you're breaking the life cycle of the ick. You're trying to have it die out without any hosts to jump onto. And Really, that's the only foolproof way to know 100% that your tank is now devoid of ick, your fish have been treated in this hospital tank, they show no signs of ick, everybody's healthy, and you can put them back in the tank. Again, best way to do it, technically, uh, it has its own issues. You know, while you're keeping your fish in this hospital tank for potentially four to six weeks, it's really tough to keep a tank full of fish in a small hospital tank, keep water quality good, treat them with medications, which is very stressful all by itself, trying not to have any ammonia spikes, trying to keep them well fed, and doing this juggling act for four to six weeks. So unless you're doing a large hospital tank, that can be a struggle all by itself. Um, treatments, well, there are so-called reef safe ick treatments 
I don't buy into any of them. I've used a lot over the years. I've heard of customers using a lot of different ones over the years. A lot of times they're used in conjunction with like what we talked about before, good water quality, good husbandry. Usually you're doing more water changes. You're using vitamin supplements, garlic soaks, uh, possibly even doing hypo salinity, which is where you're lowering the salinity. Um, oh, another good one I, I forgot to just mention is raising the temperature. If you raise the temperature incrementally up into the low 80s, that actually speeds up the life cycle of the ick and you can potentially get it to come off the fish. And then if you're at a hospital tank, you're treating with meds. So you you're curing them that much quicker. Um, you can also raise the temp in the main display and that should speed things up as well, but usually you're still talking at least four weeks. So there's that. Uh, so reef safe treatments, you can use them. They may or may not help. Uh, I've never seen anything that definitively works as good as the true hardcore ick meds. Uh, my favorite one that I've used over the years, uh, it was one called Quick Cure, and I don't think they sell it anymore, but it's been rebranded under a different name, I believe. Uh, the main ingredients was uh, malachite green and formaldehyde, and that sounds nasty because it is. But generally, within seven days, uh, I could get ick to just be gone and not be visible anymore. Um, and generally that was enough to kill it and be done with it. So that was always my favorite treatment medication to use. Um, it has to be done in a hospital tank though, because again, that stuff is nasty. Uh, there's copper treatments that you can use. I've used that before. I've used it in fish only systems as kind of a preventative as well. Uh, the problem is there's certain fish that are sensitive to it and it will kill inverts. So snail, shrimp, things of that nature. You just, if they're in there, they're done. So another nasty one. It, the problem is it, if you're using it as a treatment, so you already have ick, um, it takes much, much longer to actually work. So whereas the, the quick cure version that I was just talking about, seven days was a good turnaround. Sometimes with the copper treatment, you're talking like three to four weeks before it's gone, gone. So I, I didn't like that one as much. I wanted to cure the fish as fast as possible, get their immune system bumped back up, and try to be able to keep them healthy in the hospital tank without having them struggle with the ick. So not everybody is gonna be able to do a hospital tank. And I get that. So usually for those situations, for those clients, I'll recommend the first thing that I talked about, which is good water quality, good water change regimen, vitamin soaks for the food, try to feed as much as they'll eat without creating a waste issue as far as uneaten food, etc., And just really hope that the fish's natural immune system can kick it, really. Now, Ick seems ubiquitous, meaning that even if a fish doesn't look like it has it, there's always the potential that they do have it. And through just simply good health, good husbandry, good food, I know I keep repeating the same things, but hey, it, it's important trying to nail those uh, ideas in there. Um, their immune system is strong enough that they never succumb to it. Now, let's say you add a new fish, all of a sudden there's fighting breaking out, there's you know stress involved, or you move a fish to a, another tank, but it's one that you've had for a while, and all of a sudden they have ick, and you really can't figure it out why. Well, that's because it was always there, you just never knew it. So that's another good reason for the whole hospital tank and potentially even treating without seeing anything on it. So again, doing the quick cure treatment just to kind of get rid of anything that may be on them is another possibility that you could use. So, ick, it's no fun, but hopefully you have a better understanding of how to deal with it if you have it and how to prevent it if you don't have it. So. Thanks a lot, guys. If you're not a subscriber, please click the subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.